Hi, this is John Gallinetti, pastor of Mount Hope Church. Nothing excites me more than hearing God's word. There's plenty of bad news going around these days, and to be honest, I refuse to listen to it. As you listen to today's message, may God speak to you in a powerful way. Man, well, turn to your neighbor, high five them, fist bump. Say, it's good to see you today. Oh, you can't sit down just yet. I would not rather be in any other place than right here, right now. The Bible says, in his presence, his fullness of joy, and at his right hand, our pleasures forevermore. And Lord, we thank you for speaking to us today. We thank you, Lord, for changing us today. Thank you for intervening in our lives, not only with the gift of salvation, with the mighty Holy Spirit as well. Help us, Lord, to understand how to activate kingdom law and kingdom rule in our life, Lord God. Renew our minds. Renew us, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. Here we go. Well, I love this weather. How about you? And uh, it's great. Well, we're in a series on the RE's of God's Word. And um, we're looking at many different you know, words that start with R-E, as many of them. And uh, the first one, before we get into today, so let me just do a little, little backup a little bit and share with you, was uh, the word remember. There are things that we should remember, and there are things that we should not remember. God's Word tells us so vividly, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. You say, well, well why is that? Because if you play like in a movie in your mind, the negative things that has happened in your life, it can actually has the potential and will hold you back of the good things that God has in store for you. So the Bible tells us, you know, remember not the former things, neither even consider, a, don't even consider the things of old. Now, if you're like me, it's much easier said than done. Because we probably remember the negative things versus the positive things has happened in our life. And what's so cool, what we're getting into today, is that through the process of mind renewal, we can forget God washes that away, and we remember the good things, wash away the old. Amen, church? Wash away the old and renew me and renew my mind as well. And so, but don't play like a movie all the negative things in your mind but rehearse the great things. God says this in Isaiah 43, 19. As a matter of fact, it's the neighbor uh, verse of neither consider the things of old. It says, Behold, I'll do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make, you know, a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And so only the Lord can turn our circumstances around. He can turn bad days into good days. Amen? I love that. He'll turn your sadness into gladness. When we take a step and we engage with the Lord, he'll turn that around for you. He's the God that can turn things around. Turn it around. He can turn it around. And so he changes cursing into blessing, lack into abundance or provision, chaos, I love this, into order, and fear into peace. The great psalmist wrote, I sought the Lord and he heard me, and he delivered me from all of my fears. You ever fear a a certain type of insect. Some of them are deadly. The Bible says fear not. Or there's the fear of heights. When I get really high, and I'm up in tree stands during hunting, so I like getting up in trees, I like getting high, but uh, when you get like really stories, like 30 stories and 40 stories high, it's like something happens in my knees, and so I have to rebuke the spirit of fear in <laughs> Jesus' name. I love it because all fear is dispelled in the presence of God, amen? And, and, the Bible says, great peace have they which love thy law. Not just a little, but great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall find them. It goes on even further. Paul wrote in Philippians that the peace of God that passes, watch this now, all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And so he's the God who turns his cursing into blessing, lack into abundance, chaos into order, fear into peace. And he's the God that can turn your trouble into freedom your trouble into freedom. Just a lot of scriptures today. In Psalm 34, the same chapter says this, this poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his troubles. Now, troubles meaning plural. And so 
we can never exhaust the delivering power of God. I often say this, that there's nothing that God can't bring you through or heal you of. Absolutely nothing. There's nothing that's too hard for the Lord. As long as we remain faithful and stay true to Him, He will bring you through. Point your name and say, He will bring you through, baby. <laughs> so the first R you heard was, remember. Remember not the things we should remember, the things that we shouldn't remember. The second one, this was a doozy, this was last week, was the word we learned was repentance. And repentance means that I'm going to turn away from those things that are displeasing to the Lord. Regardless of the pleasure it brings, I'm going to drop it and sell out to God. I'm going to drop that thing and sell out to God. Now, who is that? There are many. Not only is it you and me, but also this person called Moses in the Bible. I just want to touch on this just for a minute. Because the Bible says that, listen to this, in Hebrews 11 it says, By faith Moses, when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than, that, than the treasures in Egypt. For he what? He looked toward the reward. And so Moses did a complete 180 walked away from a future filled with fame, fortune, power, and luxury. I'm going to say that again. Moses did a complete 180. That's what repentance is. It means that we're going this way and we do a complete, we walk away from those things that are displeasing from the Lord. He did a complete 180. What he turned away from was fame, luxury, power, fortune. And let me take you back just a little bit, just the backdrop. Egypt was way, way, way more than what you see on Veggie Tales, okay? Way more than what you see on a movie screen, way more. Egypt at that time, there was massive commerce, massive growth, and massive prosperity. It was like lead the field in the nations, I could say what like America is today. I know we're still going through some difficulties. Easier to focus on the negative than positive. There's no place like America. I've been on almost 27 mission trips. There is no place like America. And so um, Egypt was like leave the field. Yet Moses, he could have all that. But what did he do? He chose the difficult road. He chose to serve God. And at first it looks like you know, wow, wh why did you do that? You're walking away from all of this. But that's what repentance means. It means I'm going to walk away from the pleasures of sin. That's what it was to him, you see. That's what it is to us. I'm going to walk away from that so I can serve the Lord. Now, it says that Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ as greater importance than to serve the Lord, regardless of the cost, as greater importance than the riches of Egypt. So at the very core of the gospel is repentance. Listen, it means I will walk away from the sin of the world and embrace Jesus Christ and his gospel as the guide, as the compass, and as the rule in my life. Now watch what happens when we say no to the pleasures of sin. We're infused, we're emboldened in our faith when we say no to that. And there is an absolute secret of the kingdom that's revealed to only those who live out a life of repentance. The world can't see it. The Bible says that, the, that, that those who don't know the Lord, their, their eyes are blinded by the God of this world. You cannot see it. They don't even understand things of God. That's why they poke at it. They make fun at you. They say, oh, there's that Christian again, blah, 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 because they can't, they can't see it. They can't understand it. Until they come to repentance, they won't even see the kingdom. Jesus said, what? Unless you're born again, you can't even see it. You don't even understand it. You're completely clueless. You're brain dead. You don't get it at all. And so our purpose in this life is to know him, make him known. God's given you 70 years to make it right with him. I'm talking about to the world, all of us, you see. And so, but there's a major truth that is withheld, reserved only for those who live a life of repentance. When Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ, he saw in the Spirit the cross of Calvary and the rewards that come for those who serve him. Your reward, God will reward you when you tithe. God will reward you when you sow to the Spirit. There, 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 that, that, is, that is so relevant in the Word of God. But our reward is in heaven. Our greater 
reward is when we leave this earth suit and go home to be with the Lord. And Moses saw in the Spirit. He did a little side, a little side. And he saw and he had a revelation. How could this dude walk away from the nation that was leading the field with all the prominence, all the power, all the fortune, all the fame, and he turned his back on all that. And when he did, he had a revelation of Jesus Christ, a revelation of him and the glory that he was going to be walking in all throughout all eternity. So I'm constantly and consistently trying to help people understand that this life is just a a preparation for eternity. And if we're grasping constantly, get all that pressure of the world, try to, you know, be, you know, the, the, try, try to go up the ladder and all of that. And God's into success, and so am I. But it never is the God and the Lord. Jesus is. And yeah, thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> and so, if, if, if when, when we surrender to the Lord and his government, a revelation will enter your heart. I can't do it, only the Holy Spirit can. That's why I'm praying the Holy Spirit will even greater your revelation that you have right now and those watching online as well. Until we turn to Christ, we're completely blinded. Completely blinded. And so, when we repent, we become sons and daughters of the living God. And the Bible says that we will, if we remain faithful to Him, we will rule and reign with Him throughout all of eternity. Now, we live in this earth suit, this encasement of flesh, and it has all these pulls and all these lusts and all these wants and all these desires. And this life is about defeating your body. (laughs) It's about defeating the foes that come against you. Because once you leave your earth suit, your body, you're in the presence of God, you immediately go home to be with the Lord. There's no battle over there, honey. (laughs) There's no battle over there. It's just go join the party. The battle is on this side. Some of you look like a duck in a new pond. You don't know whether to jump into it or not. The battle is on this side. And so, when we walk away from something, heaven stands to attention. When we operate in obedience and faith, heaven stands to attention. And rewards are built up for you. What did Jesus say? I go to prepare a reward for you. So no matter how hard it got for Moses, it paled in comparison to the revelation that he received from the Lord which is that he would share in Christ's glory throughout all of eternity. And when Jesus was on the mount and he revealed himself, and he was like, we, we, what did the disciples say? We saw you, and we saw Elijah, and we saw Moses. And of course, the disciples wanted to build a memorial right there for that. And God spoke. He said, well, this is my son. Hear him. In other words, get your eyes off of building your own little memorials. Look to my son because he's the answer to everything in your life. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus is the answer to everything in your life. Absolutely is. So remember not the form of things leads to repentance. Repentance then is in succession. What follows that is no other than renewal or to renew, renewing. So every time that we experience the presence of God, we're renewed. But when I think of renewing or renewal, I think of an old, dilapidated car. And step by step, little here, little there, it's being renewed. Old buildings that they take and they, they put the new brick in. They leave some of the old, but all of a sudden they take the new and Little by little, they're doing that right up on Hill Road. They're, they're merging two big buildings together. And, and, and step by step, that building is going to be renewed and look completely brand new. That's exactly what happens to you and I when we allow our minds to be restored by God's Word. There's a renewing that takes place. And it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Man, I can tell you that. Your brain will want to freak out and do weird things. In my spirit, I have total peace. That's where the righteousness of God is at. That's where, that's where the nature of God is at. But your brain, your... Permission to speak freely. Your brain is dead unto the things of God. Your spirit is alive unto God. But your brain is is dead under the things of God and always wants to challenge the Word of God, thinks wrong, and 
I wrote this down right before I came in. Until our minds are renewed or in the process of renewal, we are totally brain dead to how the kingdom works. Think about that now. It's not until knowledge of the word of God comes into my mind and into my heart that I even understand how to pray. How do, how do you even know how to pray? Unless what the scripture says. I mean, before I got saved, I was praying to anything, at butterflies and you name oh, will you help me and all that, and nothing ever happened. But now I understand the script says, pray to the Father through the name of Jesus, and all these things are possible. And it's awesome. It's totally, prayer takes on a completely different aspect when you know what the script says. How Hosea 4, 6, that my people, what? They perish, not for a lack of worship. Worship is incredible. Not for lack of any other thing, but a lack of knowledge. My people perish for a lack of knowledge of my word. And so when the knowledge of God goes into my mind, there is a, what I call the miracle of transformation takes place. The miracle of renewal begins to happen. And the enemy is going to increase his heat against you. Because he does not want you to know all of your assets and all of your benefits as being a believer. And he'll try to create things and make you think that God did it. He'll create a problem and leave a sticky note that God did that. Our world buys into that all the time. Insurance companies, if you go back in their policies, not all of them, but most of them, and I've talked to them and I've seen it, you go in their policy manual and they have what is called acts of God. Acts of God. And this is what they call an act of God. Isn't this incredible? Get our minds renewed. That when a tree limb, I used to believe this, when a tree limb falls down and crushes a car or some type of natural disaster happens, a hurricane comes through and just kills a ton, bunch of people and crushes down a bunch of buildings and all that, a twister, whatever you call it, they have what is called an act of God. So in other words, when something negative is happening, my God, who's a good God, and it's a goodness of God that leads us to repentance, is getting blamed for all the bad stuff that's happening. I don't like that. But I used to buy into that all the time. I used to think that. And, and if we don't have the knowledge of God in here, and it's a process, we grow in it. We're all on this journey together. We grow in it. Then you just believe whatever comes down the pipe. Well... Sometimes God blesses some people, and but you, he doesn't. God loves some people more than others. No, God's no respecter of persons. He loves absolutely everybody. Even the thief who just stole at Target, God still loves them. Doesn't mean it's right. You'll reap what you sow. Sowed. But he loves us. He loved you before you even knew anything about the kingdom. Great enthusiasm today. Now, when you were first born again, your mind did not change. I wish it would have. Don't you? Your body didn't change. Don't you wish it would have? You're a three-part being. You're not just a punk of body. You're a three-part being. I'm a three-part being. God made you a three-part being. Paul said, I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. So man is a spirit. When God breathed into, when God breathed into Adam, pneuma, I mean the, the Hebrew word for life, Adam breathed and he became a living soul. The word soul in the Old Testament, the Hebrew, is spirit. He became a living soul spirit and now he will live forever he has so many days on earth i mean back then man they were living to 650 years D jude when did you say that your your boy's getting married oh he's 150 years old i think he's just too young to get married oh you're right i mean you got people living like 600 700 years there and so he breathed into adam adam became, <gasps> became a living soul Spe he's a spirit he has a soul, which is your mind, the arena of the mind, and you live in an earth suit called your body. Now, when you get born again, 
you become alive unto God. The, the meaning your spirit, who, which was dark and filled with the nature of, The Bible says we were part of the devil's kingdom. And we were translated, taken out. Now we're part of the kingdom of God. Isn't that good news? So that happened when you were born again. That old nature came out. And now a new nature is what you is and what you are. If any person be in Christ, that's you and me, you're a new creature. Old things are passed away. It's all become new. In the Greek... A new species of being that has never existed before. So up until that point before you accepted Christ, I accept Christ, we, 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 we were controlled by our emotions, controlled by the inner nature of our being. Now that you're born again, you're alive unto God. All of a sudden, oh man, you're alive and you want to read the Word of God. You want to, to hear God's Word. You want to worship. You're just an infant, a baby in the kingdom. Now, the spirit man loves, what did Jesus say to, to Peter and the disciples? Tarry for one hour. And he came back, in the, in the greatest time he needed his team, his team failed him. Pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, truly what the spirit is willing, but the is weak. There's a truth there. Your spirit is always on fire wanting to hear the word of God. It drinks it and it loves it. It just, it wants it all the time. But your body does not want the Word of God all the time. It wants to watch TV and eat chocolate-covered peanuts <laughs> and flick channels with the remote. It's easier to go down and pick up the remote, watch TV, than it is to get in the Word of God. It, it is. And so, thus, you have to train yourself. There's no such thing as you and I arriving. It's just we're all in training. We're all in training. Wherever you are at, Lord, you're, all in, you're just in training. So now you're training yourself to learn about kingdom law, kingdom rule. We're in this kingdom. We're no longer in part of the kingdom of darkness. We're now we're in the kingdom of God. Well, in the kingdom of God, there's a king that exists, and he has laws that govern that kingdom. And baby, when you bring your life in, law with those law, your life in, in line with those laws, things begin to happen. And the Bible says that I am a joint heir in Christ more than a conqueror through him. You are royalty in the eyes of God. Whoo! Amen? I love that. Got a little excited there. You're royalty in the eyes of the living God. Oh, I'm just a worm. You are. You're a worm saved by grace, and so I am. But after grace and after the righteousness of God, now I become the righteousness of God. I'm a joint heir with Christ. You are a walking, moving weapon of heaven right now. A walking, moving weapon right now. Now, you is, you are, because the greater one lives within you. Now, your body, spirit, soul, and body, does not want to serve God, just wants to watch TV, eat chocolate covered peanuts, cake, whatever, you know, 29 cheeseburgers, okay? Okay, and then now, the battle is this guy right here. <laughs> the soul, this is called the soulish realm. You know, we hear a lot of preachers, they talk about the soul and all that. You got to understand, that's not, the Bible's talking... Beloved, I wish above all things that you be in health and prosper even as what? Your soul prosper. It's not speaking about your spirit. It's talk, speaking about the soulish realm of your being, what sits on top of your, your shoulders. That's where the battle is at. Your spirit loves to receive and wants to believe. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And the mind is even worse. Your mind is brain dead to the things of God. I talk about tithing. And most people's mind, ah, and the nails come out. Talk about anything else without money. How about fasting? Oh, dear God, don't go there. <laughs> Only in January, right? Okay. It's coming. <laughs> okay. And so the nails come out. You know, and not, not, you, you see, until you train yourself and loosen up a little bit, turn your name and say, loosen up for crying out loud. Loosen up. What you those? When you loosen up and let the word of God, God, there's nothing greater than God's word. It produces freedom when we believe it and act upon it. And so, when we believe that, it has incredible things. But but you're, there there are certain areas in the word of God that 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 create more accountability in our life. But that accountability breeds freedom. And so, but you can talk about those things. Oh, that's your mind. Your mind will recoil against certain subjects in the Word of God, if not all. 
recoil. People in the world recoil against repentance. Why don't I want to do that? Why would Moses ever walk away from fame? Think about it. In the natural, in your, in your own rationale and reasoning, it's really stupid to walk away from all the Egyptian fame and fortune and, 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 and stuff that was put out in front of you. He was trained with the military geniuses of the world of that time. Moses was very smart. He had a speech impediment, but he was very smart. Yet he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than that that was in Egypt. And so, a new species of being that has never existed before. So you're a new man, a new woman in Christ. So, the battle is the soulless realm where the emotions and the attitudes and our opinions are formed right up here. And that's why it's so critically important to read God's Word, to hear God's Word, as much as you possibly can because what's happening is is that you're, if I could put it this way, you're reprogramming the computer. And if you don't reprogram the computer, it will go back to its original way of operating. So daily we're keying in God's script so we can believe God and walk in his freshness. I love Romans 12 too. It says this. Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after adapted to its external, superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitude. I call it a sparkling, faith-filled attitude that says, yes, we can do those things. Now, not everybody has that. You talk to a relative or somebody, how good God is, they might bring up something. Like, well, I tried that, and it, it didn't work for me. <laughs> That's because your attitude was to try it and not sell out to it. So the man on the inside was changed. However, the soul of the mind was not changed. It's, I love this. It's our responsibility to renew our minds to God's word so the miracle of restoration can happen to our souls. Again, Romans 12, 2, I love it. This is in the New King James. And do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so if we don't reprogram our minds to God's word, we'll be taken down a wild ride of feelings and emotions, worldly opinions, ideas, twisted views, false concepts, negative attitudes, attitudes, folklore, and weirdness. Weirdness. I remember I was working for uh, a secular company delivering bulk pizzeria. Had a delivery in Indiana. And uh, I was talking to this uh, lady in my delivery about just answered prayer and how it was at the restaurant, you know. And, and I would build relationships, try to at least, with people I'd delivered to. And uh, she asked me, well, how's your day going? I said, well, it started out rough, but, but God's bringing me through. And I prayed to the Father. I just said it out. I prayed to the Father in the name of Jesus, and things are getting better. And glory to God, it's awesome. She turned to me, and she said, well, when I pray, and, and I thought, lady, are you on drugs or over medication or what? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. And I'm looking, I'm saying, are you serious? And she was. Ever say, God bless her. <laughs> Folklore and weirdness. So many, so many are pulled and swayed and even controlled by wrong thoughts, false teaching, and wrong thinking. When I was younger, uh, I grew up in sports. I, would, I believed that if I had a rabbit's foot in the back of my baseball pants and my football gear, it would make me better. I believed that. And so I had my rabbit's foot back there. I remember sliding into second base. It was a hard one and it tore my back pocket in my pants and, and it came out. And so when I, when I, and I didn't see it, when I went from second to third, the, 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 the second baseman was kind of just waving at me like this. <laughs> I said, oh, I, I need that. Give that to me. If you don't have an anchor of soul, that's what you're doing. You know? I remember looking at the horoscopes. 
Aquarius. Oh, and I'd look at Aquarius and, and see oh, are my relationships going to be good. And, and it just, I was so messed up in my thinking. It was pathetic. And I mentioned before, but it's just good to go over again. I used to believe. I used to believe this. Thank God for the for God's word, amen? It renews our mind. I remember when bad things would happen to me, I thought it was God punishing me. I had no clue that there was another enemy out there, another God, the God of this world, that, that, that creates havoc and problems. No idea, even though I was going to church every week, going through all the motions, all it was was religion. Religion will damn your soul. Relationship is incredible, amen? And I, just, I didn't know. I was perishing for a lack of knowledge. And so I would think that when bad things happened to me, it was God punishing me. Yet right there it says in the Word of God that it's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. <laughs> so you talk about clearing up twisted and clouded views. God's Word renews our minds to that fact. In John chapter 9, there's a story of a man who was born blind. The disciples came to Jesus, and they talk about clearing up clouded views. This will do it. And, Master, who sinned, his parents or him, that he was born blind? So obviously they knew some truth that sin will open the door, and it does. But Jesus puts clarity to it. He said neither. Did his parents sin, nor did he sin, that he was born blind. But what? That the works of God would be revealed in him. And so, Jesus then healed the man. And so we can notice that God's works are what? They're good. They're good. They're not bad. They're good. Not bad, but good. How many believers do you know? Oh, gosh, God's teaching me a lesson. Well, he might be teaching you a lesson, but he's not going to pop your tires. He's not going to run you through and break your arm. He's not going to have your plane crash, teach you a lesson. When I walk on the plane, the plane's going to function the way it, it was designed. And if for some strange reason it goes down, I got it made. I'm going home to be with the Lord. <laughs> okay, but I know that I'm here to win souls and make disciples. And if I'm on that plane, no evil will befall me, neither any plague come near my dwelling. Who gives angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways? A thousand fall by my side, 10,000 right hand. It won't come near me. I remember when 9-11 um, happened. We didn't make it back. I was in England preaching. And uh, um, another staff member was with me. And we were boarding the plane. And we were, matter of fact, we were on the plane. It says, if the, this plane's, he looked at me and says, this plane's not going down. I said, I'm confident to know that you know what God's covenant means to you. It's not going down. I said, keep encouraging yourself. <laughs> and, you know, it's not going down. Okay, all right. So, neither this man sinned nor his parents, but that the what? The works of God would be revealed in him. So the works of God are not sickness and disease. The works of God is not tragedy. The works of God is that he'll bring you out of tragedy. He'll bring you out of chaos. Okay? Now, let's look at some scriptures here just to renew our minds and help us and fortify what we know. Basic, simple. Notice the difference in amazing. It's amazing. In John 10.10, 10, the thief, the devil, comes to kill comes to steal and to destroy. But I have come to bring life and life with abundance. Say it slower. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's good. It's important. It's very, very important. What's happening? We're renewing our minds. Notice the good versus the bad. The enemy, the devil, comes to kill to steal, and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come. Okay, there's Jesus right there. We want to know what the Father's like. All we have to do is look to the Son. 
I have come to give you life and life with abundance. That's a drastic difference right there. One's coming to steal from me. The other one's coming to give to me. How many glad you're on the winning, t- winning side? You see, you serve God. So the next time something happens, you say no to the devil. You take authority over him in the circumstances and know that you're more than a conqueror through him who loves you. Okay, let's take it a step further. We're in church, we might as well. Okay, in Acts 10, 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing bad, causing sickness in everyone's life. You talk to a lot of Christians today, well, God's taking this sickness and he's teaching me something. Well, we all can learn something through it. Turn to your neighbor and say, quit being a knucklehead. Just, quit, just turn to your neighbor and say that. Quit being a knucklehead. Go on, go ahead and do it. Some of you like it, some of you don't, but go ahead and do it. How God anointed, this is what the script says. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, the Holy Spirit and power, Holy Spirit and power, Holy Spirit and power, Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good, went about doing good, went about doing good, went about doing good. How many times are you going to say it? As much as my brain needs, as much as you comb your hair, I use hair gel because I have hair going everywhere. It's so rebellious. Seriously. Seriously. My hair is going in every different direction imaginable. I got like three colics or something. It's just weird. And so I got to be thankful I got hair gel in, man. You'd be like, ah! Anyways, so, okay, went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So we see that God is the good guy and the devil is the bad guy. Now, we can give mental assent to that. But we need to allow it to deposit, and, and we're renewing our minds to that fact, and then it drops down within our spirit, and then nobody can take it from you. Nobody can take it from you. Nobody. Nobody, Gary. <laughs> nobody can take that from you. It becomes revelation to you. Okay, let's take it a step further. I know you want to. And Matthew 7.11 reminds me of 7.11. Matthew 7.11 this is as it relates to good things. It says this, if you be an evil, that word evil is just an old King James word for carnal, human. If you be a human, it's the original translation, you being human know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will the Heavenly Father give what? Good things to those who ask Him. So I'm asking the Lord, and I'm just letting you know something personal right now, for a 10-point, 170-inch rack buck this year. Now I let the cat out of the bag. Man, I'm in the guillotine now, okay? That's my just a simple faith goal for my hunting season. I've got all sorts of goals, okay? But anyways, I'm believing God. That's one of my key verses right there. How much more? How much more? Now, please don't come up to me and say, well, Pastor John, how come you're not believing God for a 205-inch rack? Because I'm going to believe God for a 670-inch rack. What's wrong with that? There's some of you. Gosh. If then you being human know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give good things to you? When we renew our minds to God's Word, it clears up the weirdness and produces freedom in our lives. God, I love this. Listen to this now. Reading, soaking, meditating upon God's Word will set everything in your life in order and will produce massive peace. Massive peace. I mean massive. Great peace have they which what? Love thy law. The law of God. And so whether it's yourself, whether it's just the world we live in, it's just there's so many distractions, all that. You've got to find time somehow, some way, on a daily basis to key in God's word. Right now it's church, right? And so key in God's word. Because the more word you get in you, you turn into word woman, power man. How many ever watched Iron Man? <laughs> That's the way you are when you're soaking up God's word. Yeah, thank you for your encouragement. Okay. See, see yourself. Oh, no, I'm weak and insignificant. Not in God's eyes. You're valuable. You're the apple of his eye. But in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1, it says that if we make his law the apple of our eye, 
it breeds all sorts of power and life in us. That's why the enemy works so hard to get you out of church, to get you busy doing other things, or your own self. There is a, a repentance, a crucifixion that must take place to say no to certain things, trim, trim the list a little bit so God can be on the forefront. Amen? He can be right there. And when you do massive, I love this, it breeds massive strength, massive confidence, massive boldness in the faith. Here we go. How many glad you came to church, okay? We're on the home run stretch right now. In Joshua 1, it says this. God, this is great. Joshua 1, verse 8. You've heard this before, but I love it. Watch now. This book of the law shall not depart from your... You've got a miracle in your mouth. So we're constantly are to be talking God's word. And it's weird to your mind. Your mind will say, you're stupid. You're a knucklehead. Shut up! And receive the word of God. And your body will come in line with that. Because the spirit man is to be in control. And so this book of law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate in it. Okay, now some of you think, meditate, you think of a, a guy, an eastern guy at lotus style. Mm, meditation and all that. Mm -mm. Meditation is a true spiritual based on God's word. Not this yoga stuff, based on God's word. Okay? Be careful of that. All right? You shall meditate in it. What did you say? Let's say it. Day and night. Day day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Now, my mother, praise God, she's home with the Lord. Great woman. Used to meditate with Walter Cronkite when I was growing up. Now, the news was only 30 minutes back then. And so you, you actually got a life still after 30 minutes, you think. And Walter Cronkite, it wasn't like media today where they're pushing an agenda and all that. They were just giving basic news. This is Walter Cronkite, okay? Or, or the next guy or the next one, whatever. And she had a date every evening at 6.30. It was 6.30. 6 she should make sure we got to get dinner done because I, I need to see the evening news. And she was committed to the evening news, dedicated religiously to watch Walter Cronkite at 6.30. And she says, John, are you going to watch it when you tie? I said, no, I'm going to go in my bedroom and look at the Word of God. Oh, you're getting strange. That's what she would say to me. You're getting strange. Matter of fact, when I began a prayer life, before I went to work, worked at Story Oldsmobile. Remember Oldsmobile? God, we're going back. Okay? I would spend, I tried to spend 30 minutes in prayer before I started my day. Because I don't kick the grace of God into motion. I know that offense will come and offense will take me down instead of me taking it down. And so all of a sudden, my door was shut in my bedroom. She would open it up just a little bit at like 6.05. Then again at 6.10. Then again at 6.15 for like four days in a row. Finally on Friday I said, Mom, why don't you just come in and join me for crying out loud? And she came in, oh, 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 just like this. I'm telling you the God honest truth. Oh, oh, oh. This is a person who went to church every week. Oh, I'm just, oh, oh, oh. you remember my mom. Praise God you got born again. But anyways, I'm just so, I'm so concerned about you. I said, what, man? I used to sin like you wouldn't believe, you know, go to keggers and do everything imaginable. And now I'm seeking first God's kingdom. The presence of God is saturated. I've got joy unspeakable full of glory. And you're worried about me now? What I was doing before? Beating down mailboxes, stealing, and doing all sorts of stuff? Ah, I'm just worried about you. Everything is okay. Peace. Be still. Eventually, she got born again, started serving God, and she got her mind ready to understand the power of prayer. I was just a little ahead of her. So at 6.37, every night, had a date with the news. And I would just ask myself, I like the drawing comparisons. If you would just take 30 minutes and just turn the news, the daily hell off, the daily trash, take that time and just sow it into God's Word. What would happen? See, what you do is you build disciplines. You build discipline. You've got to forge it. There's only like twice a year you're going to feel like really inspired to pray and get into God's word and come to church. Christmas and Easter. Oh! 
turn to your neighbor and say, you're not a knucklehead. I want you to know that. <laughs> okay? Okay, say it with me. Meditate upon it. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Now watch what happens. That you may observe to do according. Please bring that back up again. The scripture. Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1 8, okay? That you may observe, watch the sequence here. That you may observe, Joshua 1 8, that you may, you may observe to do according that, that is all that is written in there. So if I don't know what's in there, how can I become accountable? If I don't know what it says, how can I how can I believe God? And so once I see it, meditate day and night, you may observe to do according to all that's written in, for then, for then you will make your way. And then you will have no show of hands, but don't you want to have good success at the job? If you're an athlete, don't you want to have good success? And some people are, well, I, I, I don't know if I, I, and I was saying, I don't know if I could pray. God would bless me in my athletic. God would bless me in my studies. God would bless me. Yeah, there it is. Whatever you do, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate, not like Yoda, Meditate upon this, I must. Okay, but we're going to meditate day and night. You may observe to do according to all that is written in it. I can't do what's all that's written into it unless I know what it says. You see? For then you will make your way prosperous. Can I touch this, tech team? Tech team, can I touch this? Hello? Can I touch this? Okay, thank you. Okay, that's all right. Okay, then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have not just success, but good success. Good success. Okay, it's clean. Good success. Everyone say, good success. Your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Woo! Is it, is it so? All I got to do is get into the Word of God and talk it. Talk. In one scripture, you can defeat the whole planet. What, take one, allow God to one scripture and just say it over and over and over and over and over again. I'm glad you came to church today. Okay, let's wrap it up and say this. Here's a sobering truth. Until the thinking is changed, no change will occur at all. There, there's no, no change that will occur. Until the mind, the soul is being renewed, changed, renovated, the same old patterns and the same old cycles that keep so many in bondage will only continue. And I can tell you in repentance and living our life of repentance that you can repent and repent and repent and repent until you repent your repenter right out of you. And it's laying on the ground. Doesn't work doesn't work until we deal ruthlessly with the attitudes and the spirit of the mind no change will occur they'll die and go home to be with the Lord but the same cycles that ran through your entire family generate they're called generational curses is broken amen and by the blood and by the name but it's fortified and kept broken through the process of mind renewal. What caused me, as a young man, just hearing at the table at my dad's house, my grandfather had a, a, a problem with his eye. And, and it just, you know, just, well, his old age or whatever, but, but what he said is that it's a generational thing. It comes, my dad was looking, we were having pasta dinner, Nobody can make pasta like Leonardo Gallinetti. Incredible. Anyways, that doesn't matter who did. And my dad looked at him, and my grandfather looked at my dad and said, you'll get that too. And my dad, perishing for a lack of knowledge of God's word, accepted it and drank it all in. And I'm sitting there, and I'm just first hearing this stuff. And I'm not trying to be Joe Evangelist or anything like that back then at that table, but something rose up on the inside of me. 
And then all three of them and my stepmother looked at my brother Bob, who's five years older than me. And Bob, as he was chewing down mustard chili and meatballs, began to nod and accept it before they even came, and came out of mouth. And you will get it too. And then all five of them, wait, four. Four of them, my grandpa, my stepmom, my dad, and my brother Bob. All looked at me as they were chewing mustard chili and said, you're going to get it too. And I simply said, no, I'm not. You should have saw the rage, the religious rage that rose up at that table. And my grandfather slapped Leonardo, slapped the fork down. How dare you? Because I said, I'm redeemed from the curse. I said, I said, I'm not being mean or anything like that or, or sacrilegious or anything like that, but I'm being taught the word of God and my mind's being renewed and I'm not buying into that crap. Amen. I just said it just like that. <laughs> I'm not buying into that. I'm buying into what God's word says to me. And if you don't, you'll go down with the crowd or you can rise up and be an overcomer, amen? amen. You can be an overcomer. And so my thinking was being changed and it was challenged and I wasn't planning on doing that. It just came up. And all of them, two years later, were sitting in the church I was going to and came to hear me preach and all that. And now, then all of a sudden, you know, at first they were persecuting me, saying negative things about me. Anybody get a good feel right now? <laughs> okay, and saying that stuff. And then as they watched me walk it out. See, you don't have to say a word. Just keep your mouth shut. Amen. Amen. When it comes, you don't have to say anything. Just let your faith do the talking. Let your faith and let your actions do the talking. Now I walk into family events. There's John. Now there's all the respect. But before, who are you? You're just this young guy, a little zealot and all that, and would criticize the living daylights out of me. And I paid my dues, I can tell you that. Wow. Okay, but now it's like, we need to talk to John. We need to call Pastor John. Well, they don't call me Pastor, but, you know, because some of my relatives, they'll call me Reverend. I stop that, you know? Jeez. Reverend. Oh, my gosh, I can't handle that. Okay, but anyways, I guess that's what it is, title-wise. And so once they see it walked out, they see it living in your life. You don't tell them, oh, it's just between you and God. But when you do take a stand, Understand that you will get resistance. You will get resistance. It's just normal. Everywhere Paul went, it was riot or revival. Everywhere. Everywhere. And everything's cool. You can talk about the ball games. You can talk about the food. You can talk about work. The moment you get into the Word of God, all of a sudden, the, the poop hits the fan for some reason. Something be, it just begins to fly. Why? Because you're dealing with eternal issues. You're dealing with the spiritual realm right now. And the devil who has control of this world does not like you. He doesn't want you to have good success. He doesn't want you to meditate in the Word of God day and night. He doesn't want that for your life. But too bad. No, 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 no. I read the end of the book, and we win. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say this. You're no longer a knucklehead but a winner. <laughs> I'm glad you're not a knucklehead but a winner. Whew, let's stand up. Wow. Renewing our mind is a process. I love this. However, the gift of salvation can happen in a moment of time. When you accepted Christ, you became a new nature, a new, be, cre, a new creation in Christ in a moment of time, a second. But mind renewal is a process. But we can be washed in the blood of Jesus in a moment of time. We can receive the gift of eternal life in the moment of time. If you're watching online right now and you never recall a time where you invited the Lord to come in your life, now is your opportunity. Today is the day of salvation. Right now, right here, right now. So look at me and keep your eyeballs on me. You're here today in the auditorium. You never recall a time where you invited the Lord to come in your life. Today is the day of salvation. It begins simply by inviting the Lord. If I'd have a show of hands, most hands would, if not all, would probably go up. But perhaps you're here and you never recalled a time where you invited the Lord to come in your life. I want to lead you in a simple prayer. And that simple prayer is simply just calling on the name of the Lord. Pastor John, you don't know what I did. It doesn't matter. 
The blood of Jesus took care of all of your past, all of your sin, and all of your shame. That's the gospel of good news. Amen? Amen. And so if you could bow your head with me right now and just repeat this after me. Dear God in heaven, I admit I have failed you, broken your laws and commands. But this day I'm coming home. God, forgive me of all my sin. Cleanse me in the blood. Jesus, come into my heart. I boldly confess that you are Savior and my Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God, man. That's awesome. So in a moment of time, in a second of time, when you pray that prayer, you're taken out of the enemy's kingdom and placed into God's kingdom. You're now a son and daughter of the living God. You're a joint heir with Christ, more than a conqueror. That's who you are right now. You are special. You're the apple of God's eye, and I like you too. <laughs> I, I know I like you. I love you. Okay? And so, wow. Praise God. So if you said that for the first time, altar workers are going to be down here at the close of the service, and uh, we'll pray with you. But if you said that for the first time, talk to an altar worker. Come forward. Come forward and tell somebody, i got a new, new life book I'd love to give to you. Amen? Let me pray Psalm 91 over you. Lord, thank you. No evil will befall us. Neither any plague come near our dwelling. You shall give your angels charge over us. Keep us in all of our ways. A thousand will fall at our side. Ten thousand at our right hand. But it will not come near us. In the mighty name of Jesus. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a great day. Bring your friends and family and relatives and the one you don't like next Sunday. It will be great. We'll see you. If you would like more information about Mount Hope Church or Pastor John Gallinetti, visit our website at mhcgb.com.